Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Mr. Smith's hat. Yes, we have that crime club story for you. Come right over. Take the easy chair by the window. Comfortable? The book is on this shelf. Here it is. Mr. Smith's Hat by Helen Riley. A very intriguing story of a finger that puts its print on death. Let's look at it under the reading lamp. It was a bad day for New York City... The worst in a three-week period of early summer heat. And Inspector Christopher McKee was in his office at the Center Street Police Headquarters when the telephone rang. Yes, Inspector McKee talking, homicide. Yes, I was just going to talk to you about that. What? Homicide. How'd you like to meet a freshly made corpse? Go ahead, mister. Well, go to 1142 West 16th Street. Gilbert Shannon's apartment. Mm -hmm. I'm not there now, but don't worry. You'll find me waiting for you. What's your name? Gilbert Shannon. (laughs) Well, I'll be... Of all the days to be hung up by a lunatic. Yes, Inspector McKee. Cassidy, get the local precinct for West 16th Street. I want them to check on a nut. Yes, sir. Hold a minute. Inspector McKee, homicide. Inspector. Inspector, my father's been killed. Murdered. Mm -hmm. All right, lady, give me the facts. Name, please. Gilbert Shannon, 1142 West 16th Street. What's that? 1142 West 16th Street. I just found him lying on the floor in a pool of blood. Your name, please. Julie. Will you please send someone over here right away, please? Please? Yes. Cassidy. Uh, Yes, Inspector. Never mind calling the local precinct. Get the medical examiner and order my car. I'm going up to that place myself. I walked in, Inspector. Dad never bothered to lock the door. He didn't believe he had anything worth stealing, except a lot of unpaid bills. And empty whiskey bottles, Miss Shannon, all over the place. We pleaded with him to give up this dingy apartment. Oliver and I begged him. Who's Oliver? My uncle, Inspector. Oliver Gold. The utilities man? Mm Mm-hmm. Since my mother died two years ago, I've been living with him and Tams and his wife in their big house on East 54th Street. Mm. They wanted Dad to stay there, too, but he was stubborn. Why? He didn't want charity. He wouldn't let anyone help him. Not even Santa's tomorrow, his oldest friend. Not even me, his own daughter. Well, he seemed to have enough money for liquor, Miss Shannon. That wasn't very often. You see, Dad was a writer. Popular magazine stories. Sometimes he sold one. Then he... Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Must have been pretty tough on you and your mother. Well, let's see what happened here. Gilbert Shannon was sitting at that desk, working, his back to the door, when someone came in and cracked him on the... St- Go with a blunt instrument, not once, but six times. Please, Inspector. I'm sorry. It was a vicious crime done by a vicious person. Someone who feared or hated your father. But I don't know of anyone... It was also someone your father trusted and was expecting. What? The blows were all on the back of the head. In other words, when Gilbert Shannon's killer opened that door, your father knew who it was. He didn't turn around, but kept right on working. Inspector McKee, do you realize what you're saying? I always do, Miss Shannon. But it's crazy. Why, Dad's friends were the best in the world. They they were always trying to do things for him. I I can't think of... Know thine enemies, but beware of thy friends. A wise old saying, young lady. And in some cases of murder, I've known it to apply to relatives, too. Let's go. Where are you taking me? Home. I'd like to meet Oliver and Thames and Galt and Santos de Mora and maybe a man who commits murder and then likes to play ghost. Julie, I think you ought to go upstairs and lie down. I, I don't feel like a Tamsin. But she is so right, Julie, my dear. It is no good for you to hear all this talk about murder. Please, Santos. Like Gilbert, she is so obstinate. Inspector McKee, you haven't answered my question. Your question, Mr. Gore? About the newspapers. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. 
What do you want me to do? Keep this matter private. Why? My position, of course. I'm vice president of Eastern Utilities. I don't want a scandal. Oh, what, uh, what are you afraid of? Gilbert Shannon was my brother-in-law. He was married to my sister. You haven't answered my question, Mr. Gold. I don't want his private life made public. It wasn't clean. Oliver. Well, Julie, let's face it. We've been ashamed of him for a long time, long before your mother died. Now, why should I be punished for his mistakes? He never did anything to hurt you. He wouldn't even take your pity. Now, there, there, Julie. Oliver didn't mean what he said. Well, Inspector... I make no promises. As an old-time citizen, I think it's bad business to interfere with the press. But my reputation... We'll worry about that later. Where were you this afternoon? At my office. Every minute? Until a quarter past twelve. Then I had lunch, and after that... Now look here, Inspector. After lunch, Mr. Galt. I... I went for a walk. A long walk? I was back at my office at a quarter past two. Mm Mm-hmm. Shannon was killed between 12.30 and Inspector McKee, if you're intimating that I... How about you, Mrs. Galt? Where were you? On Fifth Avenue, shopping. Buy anything? No. Meet anyone? No. Inspector, I thought you said the murderer was a man. Oh, did I? Never take a policeman literally, Miss Shannon, until he waves a pair of handcuffs. Now, Mr. DeMora... I was in Central Park all afternoon. For work, it was too hot, the weather. You meet anyone? Only the pigeons and the squirrels, Inspector. Yes, and they can't talk. Senor, it is quite useless to make up a case about us. Not one person in this room had a reason or a wish to dispose of Gilbert. You will prove nothing to the contrary. <laughs> nice going. Certainly stick together. I hope you don't have to hang together. Hello. Uh, one moment, please. For you, Inspector. Oh, thank you. Yes? Yes, Cassidy. Hmm? Where? Okay, put it through the lab. Oh? Good work. Have a check for type. Yes, yes, I'll tell them. But, well, well, well. Everything comes to him who waits. What is it, Inspector? A few things to worry about, Mrs. Galt. The murder weapon has been found. Would... One of you like to guess? I'm sick of this, Inspector. You have no right to make us all feel like... All right, all right. It was a hammer. The postman took it out of a mailbox on Lower Fifth Avenue. What? Tamsin. Don't look at me. I didn't go go below 50th Street. But it is quite ridiculous. If one desired to conceal or dispose of a weapon... Haste makes many mistakes. Now, Miss Shannon... Are you going to wave the handcuffs, Inspector? When you entered your father's apartment, did you go out again before I arrived... No. Well, somebody did. There was a fresh smear of lipstick on the inside doorknob. (laughs) Should make a wonderful fingerprint. Huh? No comments? All right. Miss Shannon, the district attorney, has released your father's body for burial. You can make the arrangements. Thank you. It's so awfully kind of you. I've been in touch with all of you, and don't try to leave town unless you're so hot you'd like to spend some time in the cooler. Well, Cassidy? Uh, the uh, funeral services should be starting any minute, sir. Are they all here? Uh, they are, Inspector, they are. In that first pew, Mr. Mm. Santos de Bora with Mr. Oliver Galt sitting next to him. Mm. Uh, uh, then it's uh, Mrs. Galt and Julie Shannon. Notice anything? It's heathen they are, Inspector McGee. The way they're rushing that poor fellow's body off the face of the earth. Yes, I thought of that. And him not dead more than a few hours. It ain't decent. That's what comes of having daylight saving time. If the time was normal, now... Who's that fellow sitting over there in the last pew with his hat on? Uh, who, sir? Him. Oh, oh, another hayden. To be wearing a hat in the Lord's house. A hat that's so loud, it's loud enough for the racetrack and shabby enough for a funeral of its own. I told him to take it off. Wait, but... wait a minute. He seems to be sobbing. Why, uh, well, so he does. And all the time I've been taking him from an old, no-good vagrant. Inspector, do you think he might be... Quiet, but... quiet. He's getting out. He's coming this way. And sure I'll be the devil's own witness. He ain't sobbing. He's laughing. <laughs> And in a church, and at a funeral, too. Now, see here, Let you. Let me get... him, Cassidy. Uh, what's the idea? Damon and Pythias, the spider on the fly. Who is less noble than man? You tell me. Nothing, and no one. In the beginning, there were serpents and vermin, and today, they walk like men. Excuse me, I 
have an appointment with a nightmare. Oh, it's crazy with the heat the poor fellow is. You should have let him go, Inspector. He might be dangerous. Get after him, Cassidy. Uh, uh, oh, sure. Keep a tail on him. I want to know who he is and where he lives. Uh, but, but, but we could have asked him, sir, when he was sitting That's here. not all I want to know, Your Honor. Now get going and report to me at my office. I'll be there all evening. Inspector McKee talking homicide. Uh, Cassidy talking, sir. What'd you get? Uh, well, sir, I tailed that fellow to a broken-down tenement house on 10th Avenue. Hmm? He's got a room on the third floor. Good. What about his name? Uh, believe it or not, Inspector, it's John Smith. Uh, happened before. Well, what else, Cassidy? Uh, well, sir, Smith stayed indoors for about an hour and a half. And when he emerged, it was only to lock himself up in a phone booth in the corner drugstore. Did you find out whom he called? Uh, I couldn't, sir, but I know he made two calls, Inspector. Yes? It was on the second one that I was able to catch a few words. What were they, Cassidy? Well, sir, there must have been an argument. Because all of a sudden, Smith's voice went up and he said, You'll be there in half an hour and don't keep me waiting. And that's all. Is it? Did Mr. Smith go to sleep in that booth? Oh, no, sir. He came out and walked straight uptown to Central Park. Uh, and that, Inspector, is where it happened. What? What happened? Uh, well, sir, he was walking along a path near the 59th Street Lake with me about 50 feet behind him. Yes. Uh, something was wrong with the park lights because a whole row of them was out. And then... Mm-hmm. No, go on, Cassidy. Well, sir, it was pretty dark. But, but, but I could see that hat. It shone like a beacon light on a dark and empty ocean. Never mind the poetry. Give me the facts to the point. Uh, yes, sir. Well, just before he turned off the path onto another one, he took off his hat. Yes, yes. Inspector McKee, I've been a member of the force for 32 years. I could retire and take my pension and live the good life of a peaceful man, but mm. I haven't done it. Instead, I have chosen to stay in the service of the department and devote myself entirely to... Oh, no, you lost him. I couldn't help it, sir. He took off his hat. But I... But if the park department had fixed those lights at the proper time... He was going I... to meet somebody and you lost him. I'm sorry, Inspector. I'm a broken hearted man. We could have broken this case tonight. Close the books on it. Oh, well, have you had something to eat? No, sir. We'll get something and then come back here to my office. We'll have a good cry together. Hello, Thompson. Oh, Santos, what are you doing here? I came in for a lonely drink. I saw you sitting at this table. I am delighted. Oliver took Julie and me home after the funeral, and then he went out to keep an appointment. Julie went to bed. I am glad they deserted you, Thompson, darling. It gives me an opportunity. Uh, Santos, to... uh, please. But I am only holding your hand. Is it forbidden? Yes. We never know who might be looking. Well, let them look. Do I care? Well, I do. Thompson. Well, stop making a fool of yourself, and leave me alone. It has not always been like this. It is now. I... I'm not ready to lose, Oliver. Lose? You do not lose something you do not want. That's how I feel about you, Santos. I do not like to hear such talk. Yesterday it was different. You could not stand to live with Oliver. I've changed my mind. And if you were a good sport... No, I am not a good sport when there is no good reason. Why didn't you tell me that you haven't got a penny to your name? Is it important? But shouldn't it be? Would you have me divorce Oliver for a marriage without money? At your age? I see. You would rather be with a man you do not love. He than... isn't impossible, Santos. A fish. With gold fins. When did you find this out about me? Last night at dinner. Oliver mentioned that your business was on the rocks and that you were going into bankruptcy. And immediately love flew out the window. I like my daily bread. Thanks. And butter. You cannot do this to me when I have lost everything. It's unbearable. Oh, uh... Stop it, Casanova. Don't you know when you're licked? Julie. Why, Santos, I'm surprised at you. A lady wants to be with her husband, and you keep... Uh, what are you doing in this place, Julie? I thought you were home in bed. Did my father know about you two? Gilbert? Don't answer that. I think he did. And he was killed for knowing too much. Am I right, Tamsin? You're completely out of your mind. You were afraid that Dad might tell Oliver about you and Santos. That would have cost you a good home plus a lot of money. Julie, you are not making sense. Tamsin could not kill Stop him. being so loyal, Romeo. She just tore the balcony oh, down. Oh, I'm going home. A good place for you, Tamsin. Maybe you can find the hammer that used to be in that second floor closet. What? I looked for it tonight. It wasn't there. You might ask one of the servants about that. Shall I ask one of the servants about my lipstick, too? Look here, Julie. I've had enough of your nasty little insinuations. If anyone had a motive for killing your father, you did. He made your life miserable, and he destroyed your mother's. He killed her. 
Tamsin? You know how she died. She didn't fall in front of that subway train. She threw herself. No. No. And the next time you feel like accusing someone of murder, think of the consequences. All of them. Good night. It is true, unfortunately, Julie. Gilbert was my oldest friend, but sometimes even I did not understand it. Come, I will take you home to Oliver's house. Yes, yes, two reservations on the midnight plane. Splendid. Mrs. Galton, I'll pick them up at quarter to twelve. Thank you. Really? Oh, Tamson. I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> Where are we going on such short notice? Mexico. Why? The newspapers have got hold of Gilbert's case. By tomorrow morning, all the filth in that man's life will become public gossip, and I don't want to face it. Of course. But why must we go tonight? Because I decided. Now, let's pack. We've very little time. I... I can't go, Oliver. What? Now, look here, Tamson. Now, please listen to me. I can't leave Julie. She needs me. Oh, she'll get along. You don't know how she carried on tonight after you went out. It, it wouldn't be fair to desert her at a time like this. But I... Oh, well. All right, I'll phone the airport for another reservation. Uh, no, no, Oliver. Julie needs time to organize herself. She's had a terrible shock. Why don't you go alone? And we'll join you in a few days. Well... You won't have to face the publicity, and I'll have a chance to, to help Julie. Yes. Yes, very well. I can wait for you at... Uh... At the Continental Hotel in Mexico City. And from there, we can go on to... That's a good idea, Tamsin. Uh, will you phone the airport and cancel your reservation while I go upstairs and pack? Of course, darling. Hello? Police headquarters? Inspector McKee, please. Inspector McKee? Uh, this is Tamson Galt. Um, I came home a few minutes ago, and I found that my husband has disappeared. Yes. Two of his suitcases are gone. Well, I phoned the airport, and I was told that he'd made a reservation on the midnight plane for him and me. Well, I don't know why he included me, but... No. No, I didn't cancel it. I, I didn't want Oliver to become suspicious. Yes. You're quite welcome. Goodbye. Tamson. <gasps> You just made a serious blunder. Oliver. You should have called the airport first. Now Inspector McKee will know that you were lying. Oliver, put down that candlestick. It was all worked out in your precious little mind, wasn't it? Julie needed care, loving care. I didn't mean it, Oliver. I, I, I'll call the inspector. I, I'll tell it's him... It's too late, Tamson. Would you like to know how much I really loved Oliver, you? Oliver, please. Please give me a chance. As much as I hate you now. <laughs> you won't kill me. Somebody's listening on this phone now. Oliver... Oliver, no! Yes, Tamsin! No. Yes! Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm tired, Cassidy. It's been a long day. Sure, but wouldn't you be feeling good enough now to eat that sandwich I bought for your good appetite? Oliver Galt, big utilities man, making a getaway. <laughs> Every day, a new surprise. <laughs> Won't he be getting one when he finds the airport loaded down with cops? Mm. <laughs> yes? Mm-hmm. You don't say. Are you sure? you got to be sure. Okay. What's the trouble, sir, if you don't mind me asking? Those fingerprints we found on the doorknob of Shannon's apartment, Cassidy. They ain't good. They belong to a John Revillo. I don't recall no such name, sir. The San Diego confidence man arrested 21 years ago, broke jail six months later, was never found. Well, well, that sort of changes the picture, don't it? Revillo. Could that be a Spanish name? I don't know. On the other hand, it's possible that a fellow who calls himself John Smith... And laughs at the church funeral, might be. Yeah, yeah, anything's possible now. Inspector McKee, homicide. <laughs> Cassidy, Trace. Yes, sir. Uh, what, uh, that's a joke, mister. We meet again, Inspector, and again it's bad news. Uh, tell me about it. You know who this is? A ghost of Gilbert Shannon. <laughs> a toast to the wise. Death begets death. And when it's murder, there can be no end except in death. What's that? It's happened again. 
But now it's a beautiful lady. Young, charming. Who was it? Tamsin Gott. What? A horror of horrors to be snuffed out in the prime of life. Now listen, you, if this is a gag, Goodbye, I want to... Goodbye, Inspector. I assume your next stop will be the Galt Mansion on East 54th Street, which is now a tomb. Cassidy. Cassidy. Uh, it was on my way, Inspector. Uh, that car was made from a booth near the guard house. And Never mind the... that. Pick up Smith and hold him here until I get back, if I ever do. <laughs> Let's keep talking, Miss Shannon. I've got work to do. Well, I didn't know what had happened until you came to the house, Inspector McKee. Santos tomorrow brought me home, and I went straight up to my room. Where'd he go? He left me at the front door, Inspector. Well, all right. I'm satisfied. I uh, think we'll wrap up this candle holder now. The fingerprints on it should tell us who struck the first blow. The first? Yes. Tamsin Galt was not killed by a blow on the head. She was smothered to death. Good heavens. By someone who held her nose and mouth while she was unconscious. But uh, how, how can you tell? Those swollen veins in her neck and the color of her face. How dreadful. But who? Anybody. It didn't require courage or strength. I see. What about Oliver? Huh? Why do you mention him? He might have found out that Santos and Tamsin were... Well... Oh, one of those things, huh? Did your father know about them, too? He must have. The hammer he was killed with was taken out of this house. Oh, thank you. Why didn't you talk about it sooner? I didn't know until a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. I went to the second floor closet to look for something, and I found that... Shh. We're having company. Tamsin. Tamsin. That's Oliver. Perfect. Meet him in the hall, and don't tell him what happened. Don't? Go ahead and do as I say. All right, Inspector. And leave that door open. I want to hear Edward. Uh, Oliver? Hey, Julie. I'm just going upstairs. Where's Tamsin? Oh, uh, she, she's indisposed. Indisposed? I just don't understand that woman. An hour ago, she wanted to fly to Mexico tonight. Mexico? What are you talking about? I rushed down to my office to get these papers. I thought I'd combine pleasure with business. And now, uh, is she upstairs? No, Mr. Gold. What? She's waiting for you in the living room. Inspector McKee. Would you like to see her? Of course you would. Now, come on. After you've had a good look, we'll take a trip downtown to police headquarters. And you too, Miss Shannon. If you like. I like. And while we're driving, we'll pick up Mr. DeMora and give him a lift, too. Santos? But why? Your alibi, Miss Shannon. And to you, Mr. Galt, a mathematical problem. The outside angle of a triangle. Excuse me, Inspector. What is it, Catherine? I just got the report on this candle holder. No fingerprints. It was wiped clean. All right. Stay here with Smith. I'm going into the next room to pin down a murderer. Uh, Inspector, I'd appreciate a drink if you have one. Great, great. Give him one, Cassidy, from that water cooler. No, not that. I need something. Well, Inspector McKee, are you ready for us? For one of you, Miss Shannon, an escaped convict by the name of John Revillo. What's the matter? You struck down? What about it, Mr. DeMora? Would you like to enlighten me? I have never heard of the gentleman. Hmm. How about you, Mr. Galt? I don't know him. I don't recall ever having met him. Well, then, suppose I give you people an assist. Here's an ink pad. We'll take some fingerprints. Who'll be the, uh, first volunteer? You, Mr. Galt? Well? All right. I'm John Rivello. Oliver! But I didn't commit murder. You yourself told me that Tamsin was smothered. But you made it possible by cracking a skull. I had no choice. We quarreled. She flew into temper and picked up a knife. You can do better than that. But first, what about Gilbert Shannon? I thought he was blackmailing me. He was the only one who knew my real identity. I went to his apartment this afternoon for a showdown. Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you that because... Well, because Gilbert was already dead when I found him. I was afraid. My criminal record, you know. I know. But I also know that Shannon was not blackmailing you. What? Just a minute. Smith, come in here. When the law beckons... And uh, put your hat on. Spoken like an old friend. That's the man. I paid him the money. Paid? You paid me? It's all right, Smith. You can relax. But I told you, Inspector, I was the bait the spider used to lure the fly. And when I saw them today in church... Sitting side by side like Damon and Phyllis, I... Uh, Inspector McKee. Huh? 
Uh, what uh, is it, Mr. DeMora? Uh, could uh, I have a glass of water, please? Uh, sure. But first, give me what you have in your hand. You have no right to... We'll talk about that some other time. Huh. Pills, huh? Poison. Sit down, Mr. DeMora. It's your turn to talk now about a double murder, and no double talk, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I just can't believe it. Santos de Mora, of all people. Your father's oldest friend. Know thine enemies, but beware of thy friends. And Oliver, an escaped convict. Well, I knew that Dad had met Oliver in San Diego. He didn't I... meet him, Miss Shannon. He helped put him in jail. Your father was one of those energetic newspaper reporters who liked to play detective, too. But Dad married Oliver's sister. Yes, one of those things you never understand. Got the whole story from Smith. He was Gilbert Shannon's editor. Then he knew. Yes, but liquor and hard luck put a cloud on his mind. So when he met Oliver Galt after 20 years, he didn't recognize him as John Ravillo. And he collected the blackmail money and turned it over to Santos de Mora. For a whiskey pittance. Smith had to have whiskey. Inspector, how did Santos find out about Oliver? De Mora told me he got it from your father during a moment of whiskey weakness. But why did he kill him? For protection. Your father was the only one who knew Oliver's past. But DeMora was blackmailing him. But why did he kill Tamsin? Oh, to frame you, my dear, for both murders. What? You quarreled with Tamsin in a restaurant. DeMora was present. He told you about that, too? Mm-hmm. Well, he's very clever, I must say. Mm. How did he get into the house? I left him at the front door. He unlatched it while you were saying good night. Oh. Well, that explains everything. Just a moment. Calling Inspector McKee. Calling Inspector McKee. Oh, what now? Hmm? Another murder? What is it? Excuse me, sir. This is Cassidy. Mm. There's a question that's played on me mind. And if you'd be good enough to answer it... Sure, sure. Anything to go home and go to bed. Well, sir, it's about them telephone calls that Smith not made to your office about their murders. Why did he do it? An old newspaper man and a lunatic. He couldn't resist a scoop. But how could he know about them, Inspector? Very simple, Cassidy. He was in the right place at the wrong time. Yes, but I... Good night. Good night, Cassidy. Stop worrying about trifles. The case is closed. And so closes tonight's crime club book, Mr. Smith's Hat, based on a story by Helen Riley. Stedman Coles did the radio adaptation. Roger Bauer produced and directed. Inspector McKee was played by Raymond Edward Johnson and Julie by Elaine Kent. The cast included William Podmore, Eleanor Phelps, Paul Hammond, Sherling Oliver, and Barry Thompson. Oh, I beg your pardon. Hello. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Yes, this is the crime club. I'm the librarian. Yes, come over a week from tonight. Good, we have a very unusual story of a charity ball at which the principal gift was death. It's called Murder Goes Astray by M.V. Hebbiden. In the meantime, well, in the meantime, there is a new crime club book available this week and every week at bookstores everywhere. Yes, it's available now. Fine. And we look for you next week. And by the way, the next time you sit down to enjoy a good show, think of the million and a half men who are trying to win the peace throughout the world. And yes, think of the 199,000 who helped win the war and are still in the hospitals. They like a good show, too. So keep them going with good USO entertainment. They still need USO... And USO is you. This program came from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>